Now it's important when uh, working to keep in mind that while I've created this artwork and I could animate with this where I could redraw everything on every frame that I need it to occur, that takes a long time. It's going to take thousands upon thousands of individual drawings to take a decent length animation. So if I have to redraw every piece of artwork on every frame that it occurs in my project, that's a lot of drawing. And the whole reason that Flash revolutionized and rejuvenated the animation industry is because it did precisely the opposite. It allowed you to reuse your artwork instead of having to recreate it on each and every frame. And it does so through the use of symbols. Now Flash supports a couple of different symbol types. So if you make a piece of artwork, and I'm just going to add a new layer here to put something on, and if I create a piece of artwork and then grab my select tool and I access that commonly by pushing V on the keyboard for my select tool and then I can now highlight it so it's selected. If I click on the fill only it selects just the inside. If I double click on the outside of my box it selects the outside. But if I double click in the box it selects the fill and the stroke. So it's important if your fill and your stroke I like the blue better are turned on that when you're trying to select your object that you double click on the object otherwise it's very common you select your object you convert this to a symbol and then you neglect to bring along its outline and then the outline feels left behind and is very sad about the whole process and we don't want any outlines to be harmed in the process of creating your animations we want them to be happy not sad. Now if you don't want outlines you can certainly when you're drawing objects whether you're using rectangle tool you can just go and select no stroke on it so the next object you draw has no strokes. So you don't have to worry about leaving behind those poor outlines, those orphaned outlines that are very sad and despondent at being left behind. So I'll get rid of that extra one, get rid of that extra box. So I have this object here, the object is selected. Now I can right click on the object or I can go under the modify pull down menu and I can choose convert to symbol. Notice it's F8. There are a few F keys in Flash worth remembering. F5, F6, F7, F8. These are going to save you considerable time so you don't have to click on pull down menus or right click on objects. You just hit the F key and it gets the job done for you. And it converts it to a symbol. So with it selected, I can hit F8. It comes up and now it says convert to symbol. I can type in a name here and I can choose different symbol types. So I could call this blue box thing. Now you can name things whatever you want. It's generally considered best not to start your names with a number. Flash sometimes has been known to have issues with that so you always want to start with letters not numbers. And in your names try to avoid using anything other than letters, numbers, or s underscores and hyphens. Spaces work but it's just a good habit to get out of if you're doing any type of web development. But do not use any fancy characters because that will make Flash really unhappy down the road. Now there are three types of symbols that Flash supports. Movie clip, button, and graphic. Now a button is a pre-made object and Flash will go, oh it's a button. It, it's A button is a special type of movie clip that has four frames. Up, over, down, and hit. It's a four frame movie clip. That's what a button symbol is. So it's related to a movie clip, but Flash has recognized, well, hey, if we use a button object, we will automatically have it ready to receive those different button behaviors or button states. Now, we're not working with buttons right now, so we're not going to use that object. Movie clip and graphic are two of the other symbol types that you're going to use quite a bit. When you are building animations, graphic is often an easier one to use but you may also want to use movie clip and they have different uh, properties and characteristics but for doing a basic character animation 
it's often going to work best when you're putting that character into a timeline and that timeline is advancing continuously it's not stopping and starting or pausing at any point graphic is probably going to be a better choice for projects involving interactivity the interactive objects must be a movie clip you can put a graphic symbol inside a movie clip but a graphic symbol can't be made interactive by itself. It needs to be wrapped into a movie clip shell or container. That's a, an important distinction there is for interactivity, it cannot be a movie or a graphic. It must be a movie clip or a button object. So I'll file that away for later when we're building our interactive projects. But right now, graphic is going to work just fine and I can say okay now that this object is a symbol I can do something to it so when building the frame animation it's important to work with it and get a sense of what's going to happen so even if I'm doing something as simple as basic ball or blob or whatever it's going to be moving across the stage so I have my first frame now if I want to do frame by frame animation what, me, what it means is this is going to change on the next frame so if I want to add another frame to work with I add an empty keyframe which is F7 on the keyboard and it adds it in now my problem here is I can't see where it is I don't know where the previous artwork was but flash allows me to use something called onion skinning down at the bottom of the screen here I can click on my onion skinning and now it shows me the artwork in the previous frame so at this point, I can draw my artwork again, hit F7, draw again, 7, draw again. Now if you notice, as I work through this, and I can grab the playback head and scrub this a little bit, with these they started out overlapping and then they got more space and more space between them so I'm showing a sense of speed now this is six frames or one quarter of a second my movie is defaulting to 24 frames per second these six frames mean it's one quarter of a second so if I were to play this movie back and watch it we'll see it goes really really fast so depending on how much travel you want to occur you really need to do some tests across time to find out what's happening now I can space these out a little bit by making each frame longer so if I click on a frame I can hit F5 which adds an empty frame or not an empty it just adds a frame there stretching out what I have if I hit F5 again it moves the previous one over F5 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 F5, F5. so now what had been six seconds is now 12 so now I've stretched out from a quarter second to a half second so we can see now it's a little bit slower but it might not be quite as smooth as I would like as I move through here so knowing that I can take at any point in here and if I need to I could turn back on onion skinning so I can see what's there and I can stretch it out to see the before and after keyframes and see okay I'm right here so if I hit F7 and insert an empty keyframe I can now see on stage the previous the post frame and now I can draw something in, be in between so sometimes what's useful when you're working is to have a beginning frame and a later frame and then you start working on the frames in between those in-between frames are part of what we will then later on let Flash help us with tweening our objects to get an even more dynamic, richer experience with what we are trying to create. So now I'm going to put this at the edge and then hit F7 and now we'll make it start to try to move its way up but it's not going to be entirely successful at first
So even if my object is not changing its place, if I redraw it each frame, it's going to impart a certain organic, rich, moving quality to it because it's not going to be 100% identical and unchanged frame after frame after frame. So now if I turn off onion skinning, now you can if you're trying to move forward and back through your frames quickly without grabbing the playback head, the comma and period keys will allow you to adjust where you are in your movie. So you can use those to navigate through your frames. Now I can scrub the playback head and get a sense of what's there. So we see it took some while to launch and then it got stuck up top here. But as I scrub through this you get the sense that it has that kind of vibrating moving quality. Which is very different than now I'm just going to add half a dozen frames here of just having it be unmoving, unchanging artwork. So now if we watch this, so you can see the difference of drawing the object over and over and over on each frame versus just putting the object there. It becomes very static, very lifeless. Now that might be okay for a building, for a tree, for inanimate objects, but when you're dealing with living, breathing, moving things that you're trying to make come alive, it sometimes can be worthwhile to do complete frame-by-frame -frame animation for your dominant characters. The downside, of course, is it is the slowest way to work because you have to draw the artwork on each and every frame, and if you want to make changes to the artwork or to the timing, you often have to redraw significant portions of your artwork, which makes it the most labor intensive. But I would argue, done well, it gives you the best result. Okay, so after letting my little orange circle thingy park in the corner here for a while, if I want to start just animating with this, I can select it and convert it to a symbol. I can again use modify, convert to symbol. I can also right click on the object and go down and choose convert to symbol. Or I can hit F8 on the keyboard which will allow me to convert it to a symbol. So I can say orange circle, hit OK. Alright, so now I have an orange circle. If I check over in my library, I will see that orange circle now appears in my document library. Now if you are going to take advantage of any of the built-in tween capabilities of Flash, there is an important restriction to keep in mind, which is you are allowed to have one object per tween layer. Now that object can actually be a symbol comprised of an infinite number of objects. Well within reason. But you can't put 10 objects on a layer and say tween, you know, throw a motion tween on this layer because then it's going to freak out because it doesn't know which object's being tweened. If you say all of them then you have to convert all of those objects to a single symbol and it will then transform or modify them through the tween as a group. Now a tween allows you to modify position, scale, rotation, skew, color, alpha, um, filters, and I think that's most of the big ones. The most common thing people do when they're doing a tween is they're going to modify scale and or position of an object. So what I'm going to do, I have this orange circle and it ended there. I'm going to add a new layer for my tween and because it's in my library I can just drag out a new copy of Orange Circle. Now you will notice I added a new layer. It defaulted to make that layer as long as my previous layer which was 49 frames and when I put the artwork out it put the artwork at frame 1. My keyframe shows up in frame 1. 
If I don't want that in frame one, I can just click on it and then click and drag it to a new spot. So it's not as simple as just click, because if I click and drag, it highlights and it selects that whole span. But if I click and then click and drag, I can move that keyframe to a new location. So I can move it until it's after that. So I can just put it up in the corner about where the other one was. Yeah, close enough. Well, or we could turn on onion skinning and modify its position. Now if I select an object and want to move it precisely, whoa. So if I want to move that object precisely, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move things so it makes it a little bit easier to move. And now we can see it needs to go down just a little bit more. I think it'll be easier with onion skinning off and then just toggle back and forth between the frames. Close enough. Not a perfectionist anyway. We always need to have one flaw in something that adds beauty and character. So, yeah, there's some, you know, kind of Japanese philosophy to that effect. Okay, so now I have this object here. If I want to add a tween to it, I can right click on it and choose the object and choose motion tween, create motion tween. I'm sure somewhere under a pull down menu, I can choose motion tween. And if I right click in the timeline, I can choose create motion tween. So as you can see, there's three ways to do the identical operation. Create motion tween. Now this motion tween, I can stretch it out because it, currently it was one frame, so there wasn't much to see. If I stretch it out and click off it, we'll notice that it now has a blue color. It's no longer the same gray color of untweened frames, meaning there's content there, but they're not being tweened, where Flash is interpolating or guessing the change to apply to an object based on a starting point and a keyframe, which is often then going to be an ending point. Now one thing that's nice about Flash is it will automatically insert keyframes for you. Old versions of Flash, CS3 and older, you had to always insert all of your keyframes, which made animation an extremely laborious process. Now I have my starting point, I move through time to my ending point, I can now just grab my object and I can move it over. And now if we notice here, Flash has a nice, smooth, easy motion across the screen. That's it. Now I have those two points. If I put the playback head at the middle, I can adjust the position of that object. And you can see Flash automatically put in a new keyframe. Now with the select tool active, I can even modify the shape of that animation path so that now my object is following this beautiful, elegant, flowing curve. Now if we compare that to the frame by frame animation, you'll see one has a more organic quality and one has a more mechanical quality. Both are good, they just give you different results. But keep in mind, the motion tween animation takes a matter of seconds. Once you have your artwork asset, you just add the tween, move and reposition, move and reposition, move and reposition, that's it. So it's a much faster way without having to generate new assets each and every frame. But it does have some limitations so that if you're trying to do things where you have complex changes of objects in space, it's not going to show those. What it is good at showing is movement. Now we can take the same object and use the free transform tool and I can change its size. So we can see now it changed at that keyframe 
and now at this keyframe we could go much bigger so we can do a change in size now unfortunately what this particular object being round doesn't really show a lot of but you can do rotational changes Oop, wrong option So we can create effects and now the process of creating this, unlike hand drawing it, if I hand drew the individual frames and decided, whoa, that scale got too big and I need to shrink that down, with hand drawing, that would have been a whole lot of frames that I'd have to delete all of them and redo them. But here, because I'm just changing the scale or position, and for that matter, with the free transform tool, I can click on my entire tween and well this ball actually instead of going down I want it to want it to arc this way and if I decide that well I also need it to flip over so it's still going the same way So if you're I'm doing it in frame by frame animation, there's really no efficient way to make those changes that I just did. But by using a motion tween, I have a lot more options to make changes much faster.